Am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. So we'll start. So today is the uh, second live session. Uh, we'll be discuss discussing lectures from 8 to 13, which is on linear algebra. Uh, so we'll talk about the uh, first lecture, which is lecture 8. So uh, where sir told about vectors. So basically the data that we might have so, for example, if we are doing an experiment of like uh, measuring, let's say, gene expression or something, so we have some experiment and we have a certain number of genes, uh, let's say 10 genes or something, and we do an experiment and we find out that the level of gene expression, we get some value here. Like this. So, we can represent the whole thing as a vector and use uh, R or some other program to like uh, carry out operations on this and to uh, get results and, and do our test and all. So basically a vector representation of uh, this experiment, whole experiment would look something like this. So I'm putting an arrow because we are um, making a vector. We are writing a vector. We'll have all the values arranged in one column inside a square bracket. And since we have 10 genes here, we'll have uh, 10 values here. Like the number of rows will be 10 and the number of columns here is 1. So the dimensions of this vector is 10 into 1. So basically, in general, a vector can be represented as a m cross 1 dimensional thing. So it has one column and it has a certain number, m number of rows. Uh, apart from that, uh, sir told about certain important operations that we can carry out with vectors. So we'll take some examples so it's easier to understand and revise. So let's say we have two vectors, u, which is given as 2, 3, and v, which is given as 1, 4. So both of these are uh, two dimensional vectors. Uh, they have the shape of two cross one, which is basically they have two rows and one column. So we can do vector addition. So vector addition is basically, let's say we want to add these two vectors, u plus v. So what we'll do is we'll just add the corresponding elements together. So here we'll add two plus one, and here we'll add 3 plus 4 to give another vector, which is 3 and 7. Uh, so I also talked about transposition. So transposition is where we basically flip the rows and columns of a vector. Okay. So now if you want to get the transpose of the vector u, what we'll have here is 2, 3. So instead of a column, now it's a row, and the dimensions of this one will be 1 into 2. Note that we are using the t here to represent that this is the transpose of the vector u. Okay. We also learned about scalar multiplication. So uh, a vector is something that has a direction and a magnitude. A scalar Scalar is something that only has a magnitude. So any number that we take is basically a scalar. So let's say we want to multiply the vector u that we have with 3. So now this is a scalar multiplication where we are multiplying 3 with the vector u. So we'll write 3 and we'll write the vector. And what this translates, translates to is basically we multiply each individual element of the vector with the scalar. So 3 into 2 and 3 into 3. Maybe six and nine. So it also talks about a uh, length of a vector, which is also called as the norm of a vector. So let's say now we want to find out what is the length of the vector u. So we represent it as a, like this. So it's basically given as summation of square of all the elements, and we take the root. So basically, what we'll do here is two square plus 3 square and we'll take the whole root of that. This turns out to be 13 square. 
Similarly, if we were to do the same for V, we'll find out that it's one square plus four square whole root over. So it turns out to be root over of 17. Uh, so I talked about the dot product. So the dot product of two vectors is given as U dot V is given as So basically what we do here is we multiply all the corresponding elements and then add them together. So here we'll multiply two with one and here we'll multiply three with four and we'll add it. So two into one plus three into four. It's basically two plus 12, which is 14. Uh, we can also find out the angle between two vectors. So basically vectors have like, let's say we have some plot here where we have these two vectors u and v we can also find out what is the angle between these two vectors let's say the angle is theta the the formula for cos theta is given as the dot product of the two vectors divided by the norm of the two vectors So in this case, if we were to compute this, we have already computed the dot product, which is 14. We know the norm of both the vectors. It's root 13 into root 17. It will turn out to be somewhere approximately 0 0.94. And so we can tell that the angle between these two vectors is approximately 19 degrees because cos of 19 degrees is 0 0.94. Uh, so I also talked about at last the projection of a vector on another so basically if we were to project a vector on another what we are doing is basically we are drawing a perpendicular from one vector to another the one we want to project to the one we are projecting on and this vector here that we get is basically the projection of v on u okay so the formula for that is given as projection of v vector v on u is given as the dot product of v and u divided by the magnitude of u squared into u is this all clear this was covered in the first lecture this week So we'll move on to the second lecture, uh, sorry. Uh, so at the end of the lecture, there was a question. So we are given that U and V are uh, orthogonal. So U is a vector uh, given as one, two, and V is a vector given as two and minus one. We have to calculate the angle between U and V. So basically we have these vectors, U and V. We know that the we can calculate the dot product. So since the vectors are orthogonal, the dot product should be equal to one. So as I mentioned here before, how to calculate all the dot product, the angle and everything, the formulas will be basically using those formulas. Uh, we'll assume that the angle is theta. So cos theta is given as the dot product of u and v divided by the norm of u and v. U and v. Since uh, the dot product is zero, we don't need to calculate the length really because zero divided by anything will be zero. So cos theta we know here is zero. So the angle between both of them is 90. Is cos of 90 is 0. Was that clear? Okay. Yeah, the recordings will be shared with you by NCTL. Uh, I also have put them up in YouTube. I'll share a link on the chat at the end. Okay. So uh, in lecture 9, we talked about matrices. So uh, as we saw before, we can represent data as uh, vectors, but we can also represent data as matrices. So let's say now we have experiment, the same question, we have two experiments and we have uh, 10 genes. And we have some values.
So if we represent all the values in a matrix, it matrix, it should look something like this. Now here we have 10 rows and two columns. So the dimensionality of this, the dimensions of this is 10 cross 2. In general, a matrix can have like uh, the dimensions of a matrix can be denoted as M cross N, where M is the number of rows and N is the number of columns in the matrix. But also talks, uh, talks about different types of matrices. Uh, so in a case, let's say we have a matrix where M, we have the dimensions M cross N and M is not equal to N. So basically M is greater than or lesser than N. Then we have what is called a rectangular matrix. So the matrix that we draw or drew here for the experiments is a rectangular matrix because both the dimensions are not same. In a square matrix, this is a rectangular. In a square matrix, we'll have dimensions M cross M. Uh, so both the number of rows and the number of columns of a square matrix will be the same. A zero matrix is basically a matrix which is filled with zeros. Okay. So let's say we have a matrix like this. This will be a zero matrix because all the values are zero. Similarly, uh, talked about diagonal and identity matrices. So a diagonal matrix is basically a matrix in which all the diagonal values are non-zero and the rest of the values are zero. So this is a three cross three diagonal matrix. Okay. And uh, identity matrices are special kind of matrices. So identity matrices are square matrices in which all the diagonals are one and all the rest of the uh, numbers are zero. So this is the identity matrix in two cross two. So basically, all the diagonals are one, and all the rest of the values are zero. Identity. Then we uh, sir also talks about different uh, types of operations that we can carry around, uh, carry out with a uh, with matrices. So let's say we have two matrices a is given as one two three four and b is given as one three five six so we can add the matrices so matrix addition addition is similar to uh, the vector addition that we did earlier so basically we add all the individual corresponding elements together See here, this will become 1 plus 1, 2 plus 3, 3 plus 5, and 4 plus 6. 2, 5, 8, 10. Scalar, uh, scalar multiplication with a matrix is also similar to uh, scalar multiplication in case of vectors. So let's say to the matrix here, the A matrix here, we want to multiply it by 2. So 2A is given as 2. All the individual elements will be multiplied by 2. 2 into 1, 2 into 2, 2 into 3, and 2 into 4. 2, 4, 6, 8. Uh, we for multiplying two matrices, it's slightly different than what we did with vector. Oh, sorry, vectors we did multiplication. So, huh, in matrix multiplication is slightly different. So, let's say the previous two matrices A and B. If you want to multiply them together, A is one, two, three, four. B is one, three, five, six. One, two, three, four, and one, three, five, six. What we basically do is for the first matrix, we take the row 
and we multiply it with the first column. First row multiplied with the first column. Like multiply and add all these. So the first element will be multiplied with the first element, second element with the second element, and we'll add the result. So one into one plus two into five. Then what we'll do, we'll take the first row again and we'll take the second column here. And then we'll do the same. So it will be one into three plus two into six. Then we'll take the second row and we'll multiply with the first column here. Second row and first column. So it's basically three into one plus four into five. And here uh, at the end, we'll do second row into second column. Three into three plus six into four. So this will be the result of our matrix multiplication. Now we solve this. It's eleven, fifteen, twenty-three, and thirty-three. So, uh, yeah. Uh, in this case, it happens that both the matrices are square matrices. You can also multiply rectangular matrices with each other. So, in general, if you are multiplying a matrix A with B to get another matrix C, and if the dimensions of your matrix A are M cross N, the dimensions of your matrix B should be N cross something. So, basically, the number of columns in A should always match the number of rows in B. Otherwise, you can't multiply these two matrices. Let's say this is N cross P. And the result of this multiplication, the matrix that we'll get C here, will have the dimensions M cross P. So it will have M number of rows and P number of columns. So that was all that was taught in the second lecture. At the end of it, there was a question. So uh, we are given two vectors, 2, 4, and 3, 6. We are asked to use matrix multiplication to simultaneously stretch u by twofold and shorten v by twofold. Basically, uh, we have a clue here, which is to arrange these two as a matrix and then multiply it with some other matrix. So we have the matrix 2, 4, 3, 6, where basically the columns are like vectors u and v. The result that we want to obtain here is 4, 8, 1. 5, 3. So basically the first vector is uh, here 2, 4 is doubled. It becomes 4, 8 and 3, 6 becomes 1.5 and 3. So basically we want to find a matrix B such that if we multiply B to A, we'll get R, the result matrix here. So you know that if we multiply this thing with an identity matrix, if you multiply any matrix with an identity matrix, any square matrix with a square identity matrix of that dimension, you'll get the same matrix back. So basically what is happening in this multiplication? So we are multiplying two by one here and then three by zero here and adding them. And here in the second, so this is how we get the two here. Then two, we multiply with zero, three, we multiply with one and we get the three. Hello? Am I audible? Hello? Yes, you're audible. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, someone said it's not audible. Okay. Huh. So uh, we see that when we multiply with the identity matrix, we get the same thing. But the thing to note here is that we are basically isolating these two vectors if we multiply it by a identity matrix. Like, so let's say if I were to do something like two, three, four, six, I multiply it with two, zero, and zero, one. The result would be two into two plus three into zero which is 4, 2 into 0 plus 3 into 1, which is 3, 4 into 2 plus 6 into 0, which is 8, and 4 into 0 plus 6 into 1, which is 6. So basically, when we multiply a matrix with a diagonal matrix, we get, like, we can isolate the columns. 
So here we are just multiplying this value of 2 to the first column. Is that clear? OK, so when we multiply something by the identity matrix, we are basically getting the same thing back. That is OK, that's something that to keep in mind. Now, if we were to change one element of this identity matrix, so let's say this one, I turn it into a two here. And I multiply this thing with the matrix. So I multiply 2, 0, 0, 1 with this matrix. So the result that we get is we are getting double of column here. The first column is doubled here, but the second column is as it is. So basically, if we multiply a matrix with a diagonal matrix, we can isolate the effect that these numbers have on the column. So this first number is only multiplied to the first column here. And the second one is only multiplied to the second column here. Is that clear? I'm not assuming that V is identity matrix here. I'm just showing you that if we multiply something by the identity matrix, we get the same thing. A into I will be equal to A. I'm not saying this is B. I'm just showing this. Then we are modifying this one value to two and we are seeing what effect it has on the multiplication. Then what we need to do is we need to multiply U by two and V by 0 0.5. To shorten it by twofold. So basically, we'll make the first value two as it was here, and the second one here, we'll change it with 0 0.5. So the matrix B matrix which we want should be this one. Basically, here in place of one, we have two, and in the second case, in place of one, we have 0 0.5. Now, if we multiply these two things, we get the result matrix that we wanted. Therefore, the value of B matrix will be 2, 0, 0, 0 0.5. Was that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, yeah, in the third lecture, uh, sir talks about determinant of a matrix. So, only square matrices have determinants. Uh, determinant of a matrix basically gives you the area of a parallelogram under it. So let's say we have a two dimensional matrix, two cross two. Two, three, one, four. Let's say we have this matrix. We can take each of the columns to be vectors. So let's say this is vector u and this is vector v. And we plot them here. So vector u will be here. And vector v will be here. Now, what this, so when we calculate the determinant of A, geometrically what we are getting is, if we were to arrange all these vectors, so we'll put v here again and we'll put u here again, they'll form a parallelogram. So the determinant of A gives the value of the area of the parallelogram found by these two. So this value will be the area. That is the geometrical significance. Then for, we learned how to calculate the determinant for a two cross two matrix. So for example, if you were to calculate the determinant of this matrix, determinant of A, it will be, we will multiply these diagonal elements together and then subtract it by the multiplication of these. So basically 2 into 4 minus 3 into 1, which is 8 minus 3, which is 5. Okay. Then uh, so it talks about the rank of a matrix. So let's say we have a matrix. Uh, again, let's say the same matrix we have. 2, 1, 3, 4. The rank of this matrix will be the number of linearly independent rows or columns that it has. 
linearly independent means basically let's say we have this row which is row 1 and this row which is row 2 it should not be possible for us to generate row 2 from row 1 like if we cannot do that then it is linearly independent so let's say we have another matrix here 1 3 2 6 in this case we have row 1 which is 1 3 and row 2 which is 2 6 what we can do here is we can write row 2 is equal to twice of row 1 so basically we take 1 3 and multiply it by a scalar 2 and we'll get the second row which is 2 and 6 thus in this case the rows are not linearly independent so the rank of a matrix is the number of linearly independent rows or columns that it has. In this case, the rank of this matrix A here will be 2 because it has two linearly independent columns and rows. And here it will be 1 because the second row is dependent on the first. We can get the second row from the first row. Right. Then, uh, sir also talked about, uh, yeah. So, note that if the rank of a matrix is not uh, okay so we are talking about two dimensional matrices here it's two cross two the rank of this matrix will be maximum two it cannot be greater than two okay the rank will be ma maximum of the number of rows or columns that it has in this case the rank of a rank of this matrix is one but at maximum it can be two right if the if a matrix has the maximum rank it is also called a full rank matrix okay the determinant of a full rank matrix is zero is non zero since the uh, columns and rows are linearly independent but if we calculate the determinant of a uh, matrix which does not have full rank the determinant will be zero for example if you had to calculate the determinant of b here which is given as 1 into 6 minus 2 into 3, we get 6 minus 6, which is 0. Okay. Uh -huh. Then, sir, also talks about the inverse of a matrix. So, a inverse of a matrix, let's say we have a matrix A, the inverse of the matrix A will be a matrix such that if you multiply A with the inverse of A, you'll get the identity matrix. Right. So in uh, two dimensions, let's say we have a matrix A, B, C, D. The determinant of A is given as A, D minus B, C, while the inverse of A is given as 1 by determinant of A into so basically, we'll flip A and D here. It will become D and A on the diagonals. And on the other diagonal, we'll just multiply minus 1, minus B and minus C. So this is the inverse of A. This is how it's calculated. Also note that only a full rank matrix can be inverted because if a matrix does not have full rank, the determinant of the matrix will be 0. And thus, we cannot find the inverse. In this lecture, we were given the question, uh, calculate the rank, determinant, and inverse of this matrix. So basically, we have the matrix minus 3, 1, and 5, 0. We can check that we cannot generate one row from another by doing any scalar multiplication or one column from another by doing any scalar multiplication. So the number of linearly independent rows and columns that it has is 2. So basically, the rank is 2. It is a full rank matrix. Then to find the determinant of A, which is also given as A enclosed in these lines. So determinant will be minus 3 into 0 minus 5 into 1. So minus 3 minus 5. It's minus 8. Right. And then we want to find the inverse of this matrix. 
So the inverse will be one by determinant of A into, we'll just invert these two. It will be zero and minus three, and these two will have a minus in front of the minus one and minus five. Yes. So the calculation is slightly off, but yeah. Is that clear? Okay, it was correct only. One second. I need to notice the zero. Is that clear? OK. Huh. In lecture 11, we talked about eigenvectors uh, and eigenvalues. So basically, if we have a um, square matrix A here, we And we find a vector V such that when we multiply that square matrix with the vector, we get some scalar multiplication of the vector V. Then the vector V is called the eigenvector of the matrix A. And the scalar value that we find here, lambda, is called the corresponding eigenvalue of the vector. Eigenvalue of the eigenvector. OK. So, Basically, sir also told about some properties of eigenvectors and eigenvalues, uh, such that uh, eigenvectors uh, cannot be zero because then it's trivial. Zero into anything will be zero, right? Then, uh, sir also told that uh, eigen eigenvectors and eigenvalues are only defined for square matrices. Okay. Uh, if we have a square matrix with dimensions n cross n, then the maximum number of uh, eigenvectors that it can have will be n. Okay. Uh, and each unique eigenvalue uh, in a, like for a matrix, if we have eigenvectors and eigenvalues, uh, each unique eigenvalue will uh, have a unique eigenvector with it. And all of these eigenvectors will be linearly independent. OK. Uh, so also talked about us. Uh, it is a symmetric matrix. So basically, a symmetric matrix is a matrix such that the transpose of that matrix is the same as the matrix. So if we flip the rows and the columns, we'll again get the same matrix. Uh, after this lecture, we had the question, suppose lambda is the eigenvalue of m. Check that lambda square is the eigenvalue for m square. So we'll take a numerical example. In this case, we have 2, 3, and 4, 6. Uh, since we are not taught how to calculate the eigenvector and eigenvalue, uh, we are asked to use a, a online calculator for the same. So here is a link to an online calculator. I'll just show how it looks like. So this is what it looks like. Okay. So here you enter the size of the matrix. So the size of the matrix is two, and then we fill the values of the matrix: two, three, four, and six, and we just press calculate. So the matrix here is this, and the eigen value it gives us eight. One eigen value is eight, and the other one is zero. And we get the corresponding eigen vectors also. Okay. Yeah. So using the online calculator, we can find that the the two eigen values for this matrix, which is 8 and 0. Then uh, we are asked to see what is the eigenvalue for the square of the matrix. So basically, we do a square. 
we multiply a with a. So multiplication is simple. We just multiply two with two and three with four and add it here. Then two with three and three with six and add it here and so on. So we get the matrix 16, 24, 32, 48. Now using the same online calculator, if we calculate the eigenvalues, we get the eigenvalues for this matrix to be 64 and 0. Now we see that 64 is 8 square and 0 is 0 square. So we can confirm that if lambda is the eigenvalue of a matrix M, then lambda square will be the eigenvalue of a matrix M square. Is that clear? Yeah, in lecture 12, uh, Sir talks about uh, a system of linear equations and how to solve them using linear algebra. So let's say we have uh, an equation. Dx plus 2y is equal to 7 and x minus 2y is equal to 5. OK, we have this equation. We can represent it as a uh, matrix multiplication. So basically, what we do here is we take the coefficient of these variables and write them here. So for the first equation, we'll have the coefficients 3 and 2. From the second, we have the coefficients 1 and minus 2. We write it as a matrix. Then we write a vector x and y. Okay, and then we write this vector, the result vector, 7 and 5. So a system of linear equations, which is basically two or more than two linear equations, can be represented as a matrix multiplication problem, where this thing is called the coefficient matrix. The x, y vector is called the variable vector because it contains variables. And the last one is called the constant vector. OK. In general, a coefficient matrix will have the dimensions m cross n. A variable vector will have dimensions n cross 1. And since we are multiplying them together, the constant vector should have dimensions m cross 1 where m is the number of equations and n is the number of variables that we have. So in this case, we have two equations and two variables. If we had three equations and two variables, we'll have three rows here on this thing and two columns. So it will be three cross two. OK. So in general, if we have uh, m is equal to n, a uh, system of linear equations should, like in the case for two, two variables and two equations, we can get a unique solution for that. However, if we have number of equations which is greater than the number of variables, the system is called overdetermined. And we will not have any solutions for that. OK, if we have M is less than N, the number of equations is less than the number of variables. The system is called underdetermined. And we will have infinite number of solutions for that. Uh, the solution of this thing, so let's say we represent this as a matrix A. We represent this variable vector as X and this constant vector as B. We have the equation AX is equal to B. What we can do is we can multiply it by A inverse. So basically, this thing will be the identity, and identity into x will be x. 
we will get x is equal to a inverse into b. So this is how we solve a system of linear equations in linear algebra. Okay. So as an example here, we are given solve this system of equations. So as I mentioned before, what we'll do here first is mm, this is one, this is two, this is one. This will be the first row of our. Uh, so we'll represent it in this form AX equal to B. So for the matrix A, the first row will be one, two, one. The second row will be two, zero and two. And the third row should be one, one and two. Eight. One, two, one, two, zero, minus two and one, one, two. Then we have the variables X, Y, Z. And finally, we have the constants five, two and five. OK, so to solve this, what we need to do here is we need to find the inverse of A and we need to multiply it with, with B, then we'll get the value of X. So basically, uh, we are also not taught how to calculate the inverse and determinant for three cross three matrices. So we'll be using these uh, websites to get the value of determinant and inverse. So this is to calculate the determinant. OK, so you set matrix dimensions as three. And then we look at the matrix Our matrix is one, two, one, two, zero, minus two and one, one, two. OK. We will get the determinant, which is minus eight. Similarly, we can also use this other website to calculate the inverse of the matrix. So again, we'll type out the matrix. We'll set the dimensions and type out the matrix. One, two, one, two, zero, minus two, and one, one, two. Here it shows that the result of this will be this. So yeah, so basically from the online calculator, we saw that the determinant of this matrix A here is minus eight. And then the uh, we need the inverse. The inverse is basically this. So there it was one by four and three by eight and all that. We just have converted it to decimal then we'll just multiply a inverse into b so here in this case what we'll do is we'll first multiply the 0 0.25 with this 5 plus 0 0.375 into 2 plus 0 0.5 into 5 this is here in the second row 0 0.75 into 5 plus minus 0 0.125 into 2 plus minus 0 0.5 into 5 and minus 0 0.25 into 5 plus minus 0 0.125 into 2 and 0 0.5 into 5. After we solve this, we basically get 2, 1, 1, and this should be equal to our x vector, which is x, y, and z. So the value of x here will be 2, the value of y will be 1, and the value of z will be 1. We can also confirm by putting it into the equation. So let's say 2, we put 2 here, so and 1 here. This is 4 minus 2 is 2. OK, here it's 2, 1, 1. OK, 2 plus 2y is 2 plus 1 is 5. And here it's 2, 1, 1. Again, it's 5. Is that clear? OK. So uh, in the last lecture, sir talked about uh, eigenvalue decomposition and singular value decomposition. So basically, we know about eigenvectors and eigenvalues of square matrices. So let's say A is a square matrix here. So we can decompose A into three matrices, which is V, lambda, and V inverse. Basically, two matrices. V here is the uh, matrix containing all the eigenvectors of A. OK. So V here will be all the eigenvectors V1 till Vm.
let's say is m cross n m cross n yeah square matrix so v will be a again m cross m matrix which contains as it row as its rows all the eigen vectors of the matrix a okay lambda here will be or a diagonal vector okay a diagonal matrix basically where all the diagonal values are the values of lambda rest everything will be zero this will also be m cross n and v inverse is basically the inverse of v so why do we do this so basically we when we are using matrices to carry out operations in programming it's much easier to carry out these operations in a computer if you have a diagonal matrix so basically what we are trying to do like for example operations where we find square of matrices or we multiply matrices or try to find the cube or something it's much faster if you use diagonal matrices that's why we want to decompose a matrix into this form so that we have a diagonal matrix in the middle and the computations are faster okay so this is only but this equation is only valid for square matrices okay so in case of rectangular matrices we have another equation which is called singular value decomposition so basically a rectangular matrix a which has the dimensions m cross n can be written as u So this is u into sigma into V transpose. So basically the U matrix that we have here contains the orthonormal vector, which are the eigenvectors of the matrix a into a transpose so u contains all the eigen vectors of this matrix v will be uh, the matrix containing the eigen vectors of a transpose into a so here we have v transpose so basically we have just made the rows as columns so the eigen vectors will now be in the form of rows and sigma here will be the eigen values root over of the eigenvalues of this matrix a transpose into a the root over of the eigenvalues of that so basically now we have decomposed any rectangular matrix so the matrix that we initially had had dimensions m cross n where m was not equal to n now we have broken it into three matrices where u is the first matrix with dimensions m cross m the second one is sigma, a diagonal matrix with dimensions m cross n. And the third one is the transpose of V, which is a matrix with the dimensions n cross n. Okay. In this lecture, we didn't have any questions. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, next, we'll move on to some practice questions. Uh, was this clear though for everyone? Why we are doing uh singular value decomposition and like what is basically u v and lambda and sigma and all this okay uh -huh. so we have some practice questions so basically the first question is uh the fold change in the expressions of five genes are measured in three experiments so we have five genes and three experiments 
five genes as the rows here and three experiments as the columns here. The data is shown in the table. So we have for gene one, we have all the values here for experiments for gene B, we have all the values here, gene C and so on. Which of the following represents the data vector for gene C? Now remember a vector should be M cross one. So basically, since we have three experiments in this case, it will be three cross one and it will contain all these values one, two and three point five in that order. So basically we'll have one, two, three point five. This should be the answer. So it's this option. Is that clear? Okay. Okay, the second question is find the transpose of the following matrix. So basically we have this matrix here. A is given as 145, 627 and 893. We want to find out what is the transpose of A. So transpose of this matrix is basically we just interchange the rows with the columns. So we'll take the first row here and we'll write it as a column. 145, second row. 6, 2, 7, and third row, 8, 9, 3. This is our transpose. Is that clear? Okay. Am I audible? Yes, okay. Huh. In the third question, we have find the dot product of 2, 3 and uh, 4, minus 5. So basically, we have the vectors u and v. u is given as 2, 3. v is given as 4, minus 5. We need to find the dot product of those. So basically what we'll do is we'll multiply these elements, the corresponding elements, and we'll add the multiplicative like product. So basically 2 into 4 plus 3 into minus 5, which is equal to 8 minus 15, which is minus 7. Is that clear? Okay. A is a square matrix. Which of the following is true for A? A into A transpose is identity. This might or might not be true, but in most cases, this won't be true. Because A into the inverse of A will be the identity, not A into the transpose of A. So A inverse is 1 by A. This is not true because a inverse is not calculated like this a inverse is equal to identity this is also not true this one is true basically a into a inverse is the identity matrix that's how the identity uh, the inverse matrix is defined is that clear okay Which of the following is an eigenvector of the following matrix? So we have the matrix 1, 2, 0, 3. And we have to find out which of the following is the eigenvector. So we know that if some vector is the eigenvector of, a, let's say we have a matrix A and we have a vector V. If V is the eigenvector of A, then if we multiply A with V, we should get the result in the form of lambda V. So the result should be some multiple of V. So what we'll basically do here is we'll carry out all these uh, multiplications. So we'll first multiply it with 3, 2. So first row into this column, which is 1 into 3 plus 2 into 2, 0 into 3 plus 3 into 2, 7, 6. Note that 7, 6 is not a 
uh, what do you say? Scalar multiplication of three by two, a hey, three two. So basically, we can't get seven six by multiplying a scalar with this. Therefore, this is not an eigenvector. Next. The first row will multiply here first. 1 into 1 plus 2 into 2. Then the second row will multiply here. 0 into 1 plus 3 into 2. And we get 5, 6. Again, 5, 6 is not a multiple of 1, 2. Because we cannot multiply anything here to get 5, 6. Therefore, this is also not an eigenvector of the following matrix. Next. We have two, three. So basically, one into two plus two into three, zero into two plus three into three this is eight, nine. Again, we cannot get eight, nine by multiplying anything with any scalar with two, three. Therefore, this is also not an eigenvector. Lastly, we check this. Note that here we are getting the answer two zero. What we can do here is we have one zero. We can basically multiply it by to get two zero. Therefore, this is a multiple of the original matrix. Therefore, this is a eigenvector of this matrix. Sorry, one zero. Thanks. Anyways, is that clear? Next, we have the question, which of the following statements is correct for the given system of equations? So we have the equations x plus y equal to 3 and x plus y equal to true, uh, 2. So basically, it does not make any sense, right? So basically, if we take this as the first equation and this as the second equation, and we subtract the second equation from the first one. On the left hand side, we'll get x minus x, which is 0, y minus y, which is 0. And here we'll get 3 minus 2, which is 1. So basically, we are getting 0 equal to 1, which is not true. Therefore, these set of equations are not consistent with each other. Because x plus y cannot be simultaneously 3 and 2. Therefore, this system of equations is not consistent and it has no solution. So the correct answer here will be option A. The system of equation has no solution. Okay. Next, we have matrix W has four rows and six columns. Which of the following statements is correct? Okay. So matrix W has four rows and six columns. So W is a square matrix. Of course, W is not a square matrix because it has four rows and six columns. The number of rows and columns are different. W inverse has four columns. Since W has four rows and six columns, inverse of W has four columns. This will also be false because W will no not have an inverse. W is not a square matrix. Only square matrices have inverse. OK. Again, for option D, again, this won't have any eigenvectors because this is not a square matrix. 
So the only option we are left with is here, and that is the correct option. Transpose of W into W is a square symmetric matrix. So basically, W has the dimensions 4 cross 6. W transpose will have the dimension 6 cross 4. And if we multiply them, W transpose into W, we should get the number of dimensions to be 6 cross 6, which is a square matrix. And also, it should it will be a square and symmetric matrix. Is that clear? Okay. Question eight we have, which of the following is a diagonal matrix? So basically, we have four matrices here. We have to choose which of the following is a diagonal matrix. The first one here is not a diagonal matrix, which because all of the values are non-zero. Unless and until specified, we'll assume that these are non-zero. The second one is a diagonal matrix because only the diagonals have non-zero values, whereas the rest everything is zero. The third one again has all values, so it's not a diagonal matrix. And the fourth one also has these two values, which are non-diagonal values, but they are non-zero. Therefore, this is also not a diagonal matrix. The only option here correct is the second one. Okay, uh, so this is the last question. Yeah. So we have P, which is a two by three matrix. Okay. So P has the dimensions two cross three. And we have Q, which is a four by four matrix. Q has the dimensions four cross four. And R, which is a three by four matrix. Okay. So we are asked calculate the number of rows in P, R, Q. So we are multiplying them in that order, P into R into Q. So let's say we multiply P into R. Since P has two cross three dimensions and R has three cross four, we have two cross four dimensions in P, R. Now we are multiplying P, R into Q. So P, R has dimensions two cross four. Q has dimensions 4 cross 4. So the final thing will have dimensions 2 cross 4. Right. P, R, Q. So we are asked calculate the number of rows. So here the first digit is the number of rows. This one is the number of columns. The number of rows should be 2. So the answer here should be 2. Okay. Is that clear? Okay, so someone has the question, only square matrix has an inverse. Talked about it somewhere. Huh. So basically, determinant the way it is defined, we only have determinants of square matrices. Since for calculating the inverse, we also need the determinant. Rectangular matrices generally don't have a uh, inverse. Was that clear? Okay. Please spell like the first question again. First question. Yes. Uh, practice question first one, right? Or the question, this one? Yes, yes. Okay. So basically we are given full change in expression of five genes in three different experiments. We are given this table here. Okay. So we have five genes and three experiments. We are asked which of the following represents the data vector for gene C. 
So gene C, we have three values, one, two, and 3.5. Okay, and vector we know is M cross one. So in this case, since we have three values, it will be three cross one. So all the values will be arranged in one column. And since we have three values, we'll arrange them in that order. One, two, and 3.5. Therefore, this will be the data vector for gene C, which is given here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. OK. Uh, is there any other doubt for this week? Does anyone have any doubt from last week? Week one. Okay. Sir, could you please uh, brief out about T distribution? Sorry? T, T distribution, sir. T test. T test. Yes, sir. Uh, So in week one lecture seven, I think we talked about it. So basically we talked about hypothesis testing. OK, so in hypothesis testing, what we have is we have a null hypothesis, which is basically a hypothesis of no difference. OK, then we have some alternate hypothesis, which explains the alternate scenario than the null hypothesis. And then we use some test such as the T test, which is used to compare different means. To test if like we have two uh, groups like a treatment group and a control group, we want to test if the difference between them is significant enough. So that's when we use a T test, right? So basically, let's say we have this case here where we have a control and some uh, inhibitor that we are adding in an experiment and we are measuring the enzyme activity. OK, so for control, we have some value of enzyme activity, mean value of enzyme activity, which is around this one. And for inhibitor, we have some mean value, which is around this. So a T test, what it does is basically it helps you calculate a T value using these two means. And then uh, we compare that T value to a uh, T distribution that we have to get a P value, which gives us the probability of us seeing this difference. So this difference in mean that we have here, what is the probability that if we randomly like, uh, if both of these uh, control and inhibitor are from the same distribution, what is the probability that we'll ob observe a value uh, a difference value which is this or greater than this. That is the p-value. So using the means and the variances of these two uh, data sets that we have, the control and the inhibitor, we calculate a t-value, then we use that to get a p-value, which will tell us, like, depending on the p-value, we will know if there is a statistically significant difference between these two groups or these two experiments. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. OK. OK, so if no one has any more questions, we'll stop here today. Thank you for attending. Uh, we'll meet again next week. We'll uh, start with R. Thanks.